Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a brand new copy of Genotype, a Mendelian genetics game by Genius Games. Genotype is a worker placement dice drafting game with many ways to gain additional bonuses, creating a better system to generate points. Players will be collecting data from experimental pea plants and will try to control how the pea plants inherit certain traits. Players will draw pea plant cards and will need to collect dice matching the traits of that pea plant. These traits will determine the plant's seed shape, the flower color, the stem color, and the plant's height. Whoever successfully collects the most points from validating traits on their pea plants will win the game. I'm here to tell you eight things that you need to know about this game. Number one, the theme. This game has everything to do with what you learned in school. Gregory Mendel discovered modern genetics with his work with pea plants. You will deal with simple Punnett squares, mixing dominant and recessive traits together to get an end result with, of course, the chance of mutations. Genius Games is the king of educational strategic games. Number two, an overview. The game can be played by one to five players. The game is played over five rounds with three phases in each round. First, the working phase, where players will take their action markers. Each player starts with three to be placed on any action space to take its action. After all players have placed their action markers, the offspring dice are rolled and placed in their section according to the results rolled. Players will then take turns drafting one dice at a time matching the genotype of one of their pea plant cards. Each die will validate the shown genotype, and when all genotypes are validated on a card, it's fulfilled and the points listed on it will be scored at the end of the game. Phase 3 then occurs and is the research upgrade phase where players can spend money to gain upgrades and optimize their future turns. After 5 rounds, whoever has the most points wins. Number three, action spaces. Again, in the first phase, players can place one of their action markers on any place that shows this icon to take its action. Let's go through all the possibilities. This action will change the parent gene, changing the percentage or the chance of possibilities of its offspring. But in the game, if you have a pea plant that has a yellow pod, you can change this parent gene so that the dice will give you a better chance to get that genotype for your plant. There is one action space available to manipulate each trait. And also, when taking this action, if there is a coin nearby, then you can collect it. This is the first shift spot. This has no immediate action, but during the second phase, you'll be able to be the first to take a die from the section before anybody else. In addition, like above, if there is a coin still nearby, then you can take it. Money is important in this game, and the two actions that I have described already are additional ways to get money. This is the second shift spot. Again, no immediate effect will occur, but after all first shift actions are taken in the second phase, the second shift will then be able to remove any die from any of the four sections. This is the only action spot in this game where multiple action markers can be placed here. They will be filled and triggered from right to left. This spot is used to set a phenotype goal to gain in-game points. You will need to pay the amount shown, and then you will place one of your markers on an unoccupied research goal. For each completed pea plant card that you've performed at the end of the game that has the same phenotype marked with your marker, then at the end of the game you will gain those additional points. This might cause you to collect pea plants of similar phenotypes to get additional points. This is the treasury where you will gain two coins it'll be a popular spot. This is the university where you can pay the cost shown to immediately validate any one trait of your pea plant by placing a trait marker over it. This way you can bypass needing to draft a certain die to validate that trait, especially if that genotype isn't even possible when you roll the dice. This is the nursery where you can draw two pea plant cards, either from the ones face up or from the top of the deck. These cards are then placed into your hand. This is the tool shed where you will be able to take any one tool, either face up or from the top of the deck. 
These cards have special one-time use actions. On your player board, you can garden, most likely taking this action when you have a pea plant card that is fully validated. You will draw one pea plant card or one tool card. You will harvest your finished pea plants, placing the card to the side of your board for scoring at the end of the game. And then you can sow in a new pea plant from your hand into the plot that is now available. These are temporary dice slots, and when placed in your marker, it won't have any immediate effects, but when drafting dice, you will be able to take an additional die for that round. Additional cards that you gain throughout the game might also have action spots that you can take to take the action listed on that card. Number four, rolling the dice. Dice are rolled, and depending on what the Punnett square looks like, the dice will be placed according to the genotype it corresponds with. This is done simply by looking at what the result is, looking at the Punnett square to find what genotype it matches with, and then placing that die in the section of that genotype. If a mutation is rolled, it will be rolled once more, and if it shows a mutation symbol again, it's placed in this first box. If not, it is placed in whatever other result it rolled. This is done for each of the four sections on this board. Number five, dice drafting. Starting with any players with the first shift, and then the second shift, and then the starting player will take one of the dice to place on their player board matching the needed genotype shown on one of their cards. Players will draft three dice, or possibly more, if they have bonuses or upgrades. If the mutation die is drafted, then the player can either take a coin or take an additional die of the same color to match together to validate any genotype of that trait. But the two dice that you take will still take up two spots on your board. As players draft dice, they will add trait markers over the top of the genotype on the card matching the genotype they took from a die. After all players have filled up all their dice slots, the phase ends. Number six, upgrades. The last phase in each round lets you buy upgrades. Money is hard to come by in the game, but can be very worthwhile when used on certain upgrades that match your strategy. You can purchase new plots giving you access to another pea plant card to work on, an extra dice slot that you can draft to validate more data more often. You can pay to gain an additional action marker to take more actions during the first phase. Or lastly, you can hire an assistant that will give you the listed ability. The assistants can also be very powerful, so make sure you know what each of the three cards do during your rounds so that you can potentially save up enough money to purchase one or two of these cards. The price of all of these upgrades are set by these markers. Whenever a player performs a certain upgrade, the price will go up by one. But also, at the end of each round, each of the upgrades will move down one to make it a more affordable for the next round. Number seven, end of the game and scoring. The game ends after five rounds are played. The last round will also skip the upgrade phase. Players will count up their points by adding up the points on all of their completed pea plant cards. Then referring back to those cards, the players will gain points for their research goals that they made. Each incomplete research will award one point per trait marker placed on top of that card, and each coin will score an additional point as well. The player with the most points wins. Number eight, my thoughts on the game. To me, the game seemed fun when looking at it because it seemed educational and I thought it would be fun to check out. But after playing the game, wow, this did an amazing job with the mechanics fitting it right into the theme. So it not only fits a very educational theme, but it also fits as a very strategic Euro game. The money is tight in the game and players will need to save money to perform powerful moves, including upgrades or research goals. The beginning of the game starts with a wide range of possibilities and sometimes not knowing which action to take, but as the game progresses, players find specific actions that they need to perform to do what they want, and even at times they might run out of action markers to perform all those things that they want to do. Players will need to try to plan the best and be the most efficient, of course trying to use all the bonuses and upgrades that they invested in. 
I appreciated the design of how to pay for the upgrades. It's pretty awesome because they are set at a certain price at the beginning of the game. And as the game goes on, players will take certain upgrades, driving those prices up. But eventually, since not all players are going to take all the upgrades, the prices will eventually drop, making those upgrades become cheaper, which makes sense because you have less time to benefit from them if you were to pay for them later. For me, I felt like the need of an extra dice slot was very important, and then gaining a specific assistant that presented at the perfect moment. After that, I needed another plot to place more cards onto to work that since I had another die. And then an extra action marker can always be worthwhile if it's affordable and within a good price. The game is very easy to follow, and each phase you kind of focus on different aspects of the board. But they will all lead you to finishing more and more of your pea plants. Again, this game for me looked good. But after actually playing through a game, it soared above my expectations. The worker placement spots all work well, the dice drafting definitely connects you with the theme, and the upgrades let you produce a better engine to get things done more efficiently. So plant some pea plants knowing the probability of what genotypes will come through with your family and friends in Genotype, a Mendelian genetics game by Genius Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.